Did you know that in medieval Poland, people used to bury suspected vampires with sickles placed across their throats to prevent them from rising from the dead? Welcome back to Live Curious, where we explore, learn and get to know about something interesting and relevant. Today we delve into the chilling world of vampire burials, a practice born out of fear and superstition that spanned across Europe. Vampire burials were unique intimates designed to prevent the deceased from returning to life as vampires. These practices were widespread from the 11th to the 18th centuries, particularly in Eastern Europe. The methods used to prevent the dead from rising as vampires were as varied as they were gruesome. One of the most common practices involved driving a wooden stake through the heart of the corpse. This method was believed to pin the vampire to the ground, effectively stopping it from rising. In some cases, iron rods were used for added effectiveness. In Poland, archaeologists have discovered bodies buried with sickles placed across their throats or stones inserted in their mouths. The sickles were intended to decapitate the vampire if it tried to rise from the grave, while the stones were believed to prevent the dead from feeding on the living. Decapitation was another widespread practice. Some skeletons were found with their heads severed and placed between their legs. This gruesome method was meant to separate the spirit from the body, ensuring the dead could not return to life. In some cases, decapitation was accompanied by the removal of the heart, which was then burned to further prevent resurrection. Other methods included burying the dead face down so they would bite into the ground rather than rising to harm the living. Additionally, some graves had the corpses pinned down with heavy stones or bricks to prevent movement. In certain instances, padlocks were placed on the body, symbolizing the closing of a stage of life and preventing the deceased from returning. This was found in graves where children and adults alike were buried with padlocks on their toes or feet. One of the most chilling discoveries is the case of the Vampire of Venice. In a 16th century mass grave in Venice, a woman's skeleton was found with a brick in her mouth. Researchers believe this was an attempt to prevent her from biting and spreading the plague which was often associated with vampirism. Another notable case is that of Lena Brown from Rhode Island. In 1892, her body was exhumed and her heart was burned to stop the supposed vampire from causing further deaths in her family. This incident, part of the New England Vampire Panic, was well documented and attracted significant attention at that time. In Poland, near the village of Luzino, archaeologists uncovered a mass grave with several bodies treated as vampires. Of the 450 bodies discovered, many showed signs of posthumous mutilation aimed at preventing them from returning to life. This included decapitation and the placement of bricks around the head, arms and legs of the deceased. The extent and uniformity of these practices highlight the widespread belief and fear of vampires in this region during the medieval period. One of the most notorious vampire cases is that of Peter Blagojevich from Serbia. In 1725, following his death, nine villagers reportedly died shortly after seeing his apparition. His body was assumed and found with fresh blood at the mouth, leading the villagers to stake him through the heart and burn his remains to prevent further deaths. The fear of vampires often stems from a lack of understanding of diseases and the decomposition process. For instance, during the plague, corpses would bloat and bleed from the mouth, leading people to believe the dead were feasting on the living. This confusion fueled the hysteria and led to the extreme burial practices we find so fascinating today. In times of epidemics, the first to die were often blamed for the continuing deaths, leading to the posthumous mutilation of their bodies as a preventive measure. For example, during cholera outbreaks, rapid deaths with no visible cause on the bones led to suspicions of vampirism. People also believed that those who died a violent death or were unbaptized were at risk of becoming vampires. 
This belief was so strong that entire communities participated in exhuming and mutilating bodies to protect themselves. Modern science has helped demystify many of the practices associated with vampire burials. Researchers now believe that these burials were often the result of mass hysteria during epidemics. The corpses of those who died first were suspected of rising from the dead and causing further deaths leading to these drastic preventive measures. Chemical analysis of bones from vampire burials have revealed that those suspected of being vampires were often locals and not outsiders. This debunks the myth that vampires were strangers or immigrants who brought disease. Instead, it shows how fear and superstition could turn against members of the community during times of crisis. Vampire burials give us a glimpse into the fears and superstitions of our ancestors. These chilling practices remind us of the length people will go to protect themselves from the unknown. Join us next time on Live Curious as we uncover more mysterious and interesting tales from history to science. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more captivating stories.